All right, welcome back to Fast Gadgets. Uh, today we're going to talk about a topic that I think is fairly important, and I do want to establish that um, for the most part, all the tools can be used on a server or a workstation. However, I'm really focusing on a workstation, and I'm using uh, logical volumes with logical volume management. So keep that in mind. Many times with servers, there's physical volumes, so it's a little bit different. However, um, overall, what we're going to be talking about is disk management and managing how much content is on your uh, partitions and on your physical drives and basically keeping an eye on usage, which is very important. Now, if you're running a server, these are the kind of things that should be done on a daily basis. Um, my experience with servers, especially when you set physical partitions, um, you want to be managing and watching swap, temp, um, home, uh, user, root, all the different partitions um, for any unusual activity or behavior. Now you can use a tool called LogWatch and there's other tools like LogWatch that will basically um, scan your logs and then give you summaries of the logs and also if you wanted to you can include um, reports on disk usage, logins, and things like that. So you definitely want to keep an eye on it. If you've got a partition, um, say uh, user and or Etsy or whatever, and you have 40 gigabytes free and then three days later you've got three gigabytes free, this is fairly important, especially if you're running a server. So these are the kind of things you want to watch out for. So we're going to go through some of the tools you can use, and I'm going to start with the command line tools. Um, I always recommend to users to get used to the command line tools first. These are the most important because we can't assume that every system that you're going to be working on is going to have the graphical interface and it's going to have the same tools, but most of the time um, the command line tools are universal and many times you can use it on Unix or Linux and pretty much any flavor of Linux so fairly important to know so here's what I do um, first thing I do when I'm checking to see what my disk usage is uh, and you don't have to be root to do this is using the DF command now looking at the output as it is it's just showing me uh, blocks and I don't know about you but 1k blocks aren't really very useful to me um, I'm not really sure what I'm seeing here so I like to do DF and I will send the H switch for human readable uh, which makes the output much easier to read in my opinion so now we have here on the second run of the command um, the actual size in gigabytes which makes more sense to me and also keeping in mind this is based on 1024 bytes not 1000 bytes uh, that's an important distinction um, many people say hey I bought a 2 terabyte drive why is it reporting a 1.78 terabytes available well because of course the manufacturers use 1000 bytes as their base uh, to establish the size of the drive and in reality the operating system is using 1024 bytes as the basis of the size of the drive. Why do the hard drive manufacturers do that? Um, if you don't already know it makes the drive appear to be larger than it is so you think you're getting more for the money, right? Makes sense. Uh, anyway, so we can look at the different partitions here and we can see usage and we can get a pretty good idea. Um, the one I always focus on when I'm on a workstation um, first is the home directory um, in uh, Fedora based distributions. Now if you're looking on a Mac system or something else home isn't relevant at all and you probably won't even see that directory. You probably want to look at the user partition. Um, what else is important? Well uh, boot is important. We're doing fine right now. Um, we still have, well, we've got 62% in use. 
Um, why is boot important? Well, that's where the kernels reside. Now, I have set my system to give me five kernels rotating. So, um, basically, as new kernels come in, um, first kernel gets loaded in. If I do an update, a second kernel is added, and then that becomes the default. But the previous kernel is saved. So, up to five kernels, I will save previous versions. Well, that takes space. Uh, because we have some files in the boot directory um, that are consuming space. Not really a big issue, still have plenty of room. I'm not concerned at all about any problems with that. Uh, let's see, anything else important in here? Uh, temp is very important. On a server, I like to watch temp and swap. If I see something really funny going on um, on a server, the temp directory usually will show um, some increases and a lot of times when I am running servers, I do physical partitions for var, which we don't see here because we're looking at partitions. Um, those are always very concerning for me, so I pay attention to var. Uh, what else? Etsy, another good one to pay attention to. And there are actually tools out there like Tripwire that you can use if you want um, on a server. So you set a baseline and then you, you're going to manage um, based on that baseline um, with Tripwire you're going to check and it'll actually report to you if there are any increases or changes in any files in a given partition so um, Etsy of course is where all our configuration files hang out we would want to know if a configuration file changed and we didn't change it of course if we changed it the right way uh, is to establish a new baseline after the change and then we would know if any inappropriate or uh, unexpected changes occur. So DF's a good tool. Another tool that's really useful is DU. Now if I run DU without any switches, it's going to show me uh, basically, I believe it's blocks once again. Um, let's do a shorter command. Let's do DU home mark downloads uh, so we're trying to find out okay it doesn't actually tell you but I believe it's in blocks um, not again not really very useful and the other thing is I don't necessarily need to see every single folder and subfolder however if I did and I wanted to be able to make it human readable once again I would use the H which gives me human readable um, depending on the size of that particular directory it's in kilobytes and then it gives me a total at the end and I can see here that I actually have 146 gigabytes um, that are used so I can get specific I can do uh, du uh, before I do that I can actually do du ch and it will give me a grand total at the end now I only did one directory I was specific so this is the total for home mark and then it gives me the grand total so if I just did du ch um, we're getting totals of every single directory. Oh, by the way, I think, let's see where I am. Um, so if I do a PWD, I'm in home mark, so it automatically gave me the total. But if I were to change directory and do a DU CH here, it's going to go through the entire drive now and it's printing subtotals of directories followed by at the very bottom the final grand total so this could take a little while to run so I'm actually gonna break it um, so let's go back well let's do this so if I do du and I want a summary I wanna know how much space is being consumed in a given directory. I can do S for summary, H for human readable, and then do home mark. And it tells me you're using 146 gigabytes of home mark. Um, 
Okay, so we've got these different commands that we can use that are really helpful. On Fedora 24 at least, and probably previous versions of Fedora as well, um, there are some other tools you can use. If you do a search for disk, um, there's a basic disks utility that you can use. And this one shows the physical disk and it shows other physical drives that are plugged in. So don't get disk confused with block device. Think of block device as a partition, basically. Um, in this case, however, yeah, these are really partitions. Um, so if I'm on this disk and I look at this volume and it shows me, oh, look, I've got 4.3% free. And then I look at this particular partition and I've got 59.4% full. But when I click on my home partition, which is actually looking at the logical volume, well, it consumes the entire drive, right? Um, so you got to look at block devices. These are the so-called logical volumes living within the physical partition. And swap's always a good one to keep an eye on. In this case, there's really none in use. Um, and of course home which tells you what we already knew now it's saying a little bit different I'm 82.7 percent full which is fine you get the basic idea uh, you can do some simple math and do the subtraction and it's saying we're 160 gigabytes full so about 160 gigabytes in use and I happen to know if I go back to my command line and do a du sh uh, home mark I think it's a capital V we're gonna find out yeah so I've got 35 gigabytes in home mark videos I got quite a bit stored in there and I could look at other directories and I could also look at if I wanted to the report uh, which shows me everything so so here we have the GUI now it tells you this is mounted at home so if I click this link it'll actually bring up Dolphin uh, because right now of course I'm over in uh, KDE but uh, if I wanted to I could right click mark and go to properties and basically it's gonna tell me okay well the mark folder has 145 gigabytes uh, that's in use and I'm sorry yeah 145 gigabytes and I've got no excuse me there are 145 gigabytes of files and the total uh, partition size is 177.1 gigabytes with 22.1 free so if I wanted to I could go into mark and for example I could do the same thing I could right click on downloads and it tells me here um, that I've actually got 14.5 gigabytes in downloads and notice it's showing uh, the full home directory here device so this is for the particular directory I should point that out that's sort of important um, I've got some virtual boxes here let's see what my usage is here 64 gigabytes so uh, virtual boxes take up quite a bit of course we know that and my videos are another uh, hog so to speak um, I have some Caden live projects probably not very large no not at all 200 megabytes nothing to speak of um, documents let's have a look in documents 1.4 gigabytes really not that much um, so it is possible to look in the graphical interface but I feel like DU and DF are better tools um, because you know you're probably going to be able to use those on any Linux system um, there's these commands that are universal that are really useful and then there's uh, some commands that aren't necessarily available in every distribution so it really depends uh, on distribution but for the most part you should be able to use these commands anytime anywhere so hopefully this helps you out um, I'd like to point out in this system I've got a 256 gigabyte SSD 
and this is the only operating system on this particular system the Lenovo Yoga 2 Pro uh, if my SSD is 256 gigabytes or smaller I do not do dual boots um, basically if I try to do much on a system that's dual booted and I've split off my partitions uh, if we do another DFH you can see that home has a total of 178 gigabytes available well that's going to be cut down to about half that size and really you know 80 gigabytes um, really not that much for today's usage um, I have Steam installed on here so I've got a couple of games um, all this stuff takes up room so whenever I am using a system uh, in this case this is my Linux system I have the new Macintosh the Mac Pro that I bought MacBook Pro I should say um, it's also a 256 gigabyte SSD it only has uh, OS 10 on it and I prefer to run just that particular operating system whichever one I choose for the the system um, I do have a main desktop that has two SSDs it's got a Windows 250 gigabyte SSD and it has a Linux 250 gigabyte SSD and then it has a four terabyte uh, standard drive which I use for mass storage of whatever videos music documents backups and so on and so forth so uh, your mileage is gonna vary if you are using a 128 gigabyte SSD in a system it's something also to consider uh, so I got trade-offs here you know I'm running all Linux here but I have some virtual machines well the virtual machines are taking up 64 gigabytes so I could just do a dual boot and do away with the virtual machines so it's all trade-offs um, as much as some people don't like to consider it the reason why one other reason actually that I choose to use um, one operating system on the entire SSD uh, and, and only have one on this system is because it really does force you to use the system and know the system um, the purpose of this particular uh, portable, ultra portable for me is specifically to use Linux. So that's my chosen daily driver. Um, if I put Windows on here, the only purpose would be to play games. And with 128 gigabytes split in half, which is probably what I would do, uh, there's not a whole ton of room for games. So that would be a major downside for me. Um, so it just works best for me and you got to do what works for you I could do it but I, I use this method other thing is I can switch out my virtual machines anytime I want so I can dump one and put two or three more on there of various operating systems so that's disk manage for management in my view um, why it's important why you should be doing it it's a little bit more difficult in some ways than it is with Windows uh, but overall it's fine uh, I have no problems doing disk management in Linux and if you have the right tools you're not gonna have a problem thank you for watching hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time